Hello, Philip and uh, Holly. Yes, well, the window is right below me here, actually, in the, the U.S. laboratory. And at the moment, it looks like we're going over the northern northern Canada and um, the Hudson Bay, James Bay area. It's beautiful, snowy and icy down there. And how are you getting used to life in space? We hear the first 24 hours are particularly tough, just getting adjusted to things. That's right, yes. Uh, when you first come into space, your body has to kind of switch off the vestibular system. It's getting all these weird signals from the inner ear with all the fluid in microgravity. Um, and once your body works that out, and it takes about 24 hours, you feel absolutely fine. And whilst you're up there, what sort of science experiments have you been doing? Well, the science is really mixed. We will be doing about 250 experiments during this six-month stay in space. Um, to give you an example, a couple of weeks ago, Tim Copra, my NASA counterpart and myself, we were in the airlock and we were using the airlock as a hyperbaric chamber, taking it to a reduced pressure so that we could investigate the lungs and uh, nitric oxide as an indicator of airway inflammation. And this is going to have benefit for people who suffer from asthma, for example, on Earth. Uh, last week, we were looking at combustion techniques and actually uh, lighting fires on board the space station, which sounds a bit remarkable, but all in a very controlled environment. Um, but the serious side of that is to try and find better combustion techniques for back on Earth, again, for cleaner engines and more efficient um, uh, 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 sort of engine systems. And then this week as well, we're doing some investigations into liquid crystal displays. And how adept are you now at the, uh, the tricks in space? You must be pretty good at the backflips. Well, the funny thing is, we don't spend our day doing backflips, but yeah, I'm pretty good at moving around the station fairly quickly now. I'm holding here this very beautiful book called Goodnight Spaceman. This is released on the 7th of April. Um, the foreword in it is from you yourself. It's actually inspired by your mission and your two little boys at home looking up at the moon. And this is something that you, you want to do, isn't it? To inspire a next generation. Yes, that's absolutely right. I mean, flying into space is a huge privilege. It's also a wonderful opportunity and a very valuable opportunity. And one of the main objectives of my mission was to try and share that opportunity with as many people as possible. And in particular, with our young generation, to use it as inspiration for children to, be, to get interested in space and, more importantly, to get interested in science. Um, and this book really reaches out to the very youngest of our generation. And, of course, I have a, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, so uh, it has has a particular closeness to my heart to be able to um, be part of this this book which is designed to get children excited about science and excited about space we saw you present an award to Adele at the Brits do you know the funny thing was when I was packing my bag and it's not a very big bag it really is kind of just it's about the size of two shoe boxes maybe uh, so I had to think carefully about what to take and when I packed that, I didn't actually have a specific purpose for it. But I thought to myself, I'm sure there'll be at least one occasion where I can think I'll need to wear a tuxedo in space. And, and thankfully, it's paid off. 